know shortly. They also use this to produce fusion. This is a fusion reactor. And um, I call one the right doubling circuit, one the left doubling circuit, the winding schematic for inexhaustible energy. I call the primal point of unity is the hole right here where the emanation is coming out of. Um, number of per permutations defining the invisible. And we'll, we're, that's what we're going to be learning is number of permutations, how they work. Okay? Can everyone see that real well? Yeah? Okay. Now, I might, I might tell you that the reason I'm, I'm explaining to you in such a uh, technical fashion right now is because, um, it's because I needed some variation in how I've been presenting it mathematically. So this is kind of like my change of theme for me. So this is a whole different... So, so I'm instead explaining it to you now this way because um, the, the other day I've been explaining in schools and I've been doing it mostly mathematically. But, okay, so here's my flyer on where I give classes. Um, that's been at the Manoa Innovation Center. I give them at many different places. These are the topics. Jane gave me a beautiful flyer. It's in the shape of a pyramid. All my friends who helped me on this, it's all been a free gift. They donate their time and help. I'm very blessed for that because otherwise I would not even be around. I'd be sleeping on a shipwrecked beach someplace. Now don't, don't laugh. This is from my homepage. Okay. And this is, um, that's my homepage number, rodin.org. These are my letters, correspondences, web and page mail, articles, scientific results. We haven't gotten hardly anything up there yet. Uh, but we'll have it up there in about 30 days. We've got pictures up there so far. I, Marco Roden, do declare with witnesses present that I am hereby giving to the world to use my complete work, aerodynamics, the dandelion puff principle, point energy creation physics. In return for one third, of, one third of the gross of all income derived therefrom. This is to be debased upon the honor system with no legal recourse by either and all parties concerned. Everything shall be voluntary. Thus, my copyright and intellectual property is now placed in the trust of the public domain. May all of mankind profit therefrom. Further, it is my will that any money derived therefrom shall be used to print and disseminate the hidden words of high sacred scriptures. Much aloha. And that's for me. Those are my fingerprints. <laughs> and then... And this is when I started making the coil correctly because I'm making it out of a plasma gas. This says, paid $100 for a prototype flux thruster atom pulsar rodent coil made out of glass tubes and argon gas to be hand blown by George Glasser. Would you believe that his last name is Glasser? He's, from time immemorial, they've been blowing glass from Germany. He escaped out of Germany in, in I think it was uh, 85. If he just hung in there a little longer, he could have walked out. <laughs> and um, he, didn't, he didn't tunnel out or anything. They actually threw him out. For, it's interesting because they threw him out because of the fact that they put him in jail for a year and when it was time to release him, he said he was going to tell him how bad the system was and stuff and he was just such an <laughs> outspoken guy, they just threw him out. Which was, I guess it was easier than fighting him any longer. So, uh, and his family's from time immemorial been blowing glass. Um, okay. This is, um, let's see. This is some of my places where I've taught. Airspace America, George Bush was the master of ceremonies. There was 30 congressmen pregnant, present, pregnant, oh. like it. They all had... <laughs> well, I was just going to say, they all had red jackets and black ties. Um, it, was, it wasn't really all that, that pretty, really. And uh, they, I, everyone had, I had like my own huge <laughs> dining room table. It was not, it was just hard work and, and nobody understood a thing anyway. But they said I had the most revolutionary propulsion system ever created. And um, they stuck me with blowing electronics. General Atomics is right here, who work in fusion. Well, I decided I'd better do my work in DNA, as I, which was my goal. So I actually, as you are going about to learn about DNA, figured out the secret of DNA. I, and so this is, I published at the biggest genetic engineering conference in the world. This is the most heavily attended in the world. These are all doctors with PhD here. Senior research scientist. Here's another doctor, VP, process development. And here's me. I should have been at some title. I guess we'll call me um, 
resident, I guess, what? Tell me, res resident um, mind jogger or whatever, <laughs> mind jogger. Um, and then the response to my work here was went to the German, the German Journal of Oncology, which studied cancer, said my work's of, of extreme importance to me. Your conclusions are very likely. I recommend your paper for publication in the German Journal of Oncology. Please keep me informed of your further work. Sincerely, Dr. Hanze Niebuhr. That was very flattering. Um, I expect people to endorse my work. I'll tell you something, though. I get huge endorsements. The number one. I can teach anywhere in the world I want. But the higher the endorsements, they understand very, very little of my work. Very little. But they immediately identify, they've had certain experiences in their life over their 10, 20, 30, 40 years in their profession. And as soon as they see the work and they look at it, it makes a connection of something happened 10 years ago. Like uh, the president of an organization, Bob Ulick, said, I had the most detail and quality ever done on Torah. It's the best he ever saw. Then he goes on and tells me about the story about how this man was working on the same thing, the military held him captive, and he had to actually climb out over the fence to get out of that camp compound, all these weird things. But I get all these incredible compliments, but do they really understand my work? No, they don't. And that's what my goal is. Okay, my goal is not, I went here to get my work understood, not to get these endorsements. I started at the top because I thought it would be the easiest. Okay, actually the easiest is educating you. I learned the lesson. And it's you who's going to have to figure out how to, everyone else is going to learn this. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, okay, the first thing next I'm going to do is put these over here. Um, put this here. Here's our good old multiplication table. And I hope I don't do anything wrong. I'm going to try to take down our coil. So here's a side view of the coil. Here's the emanations coming out. These green arrows emanations are the focal center. It is spirit. It is what Charlie asked about, which was, what was your question earlier again, Charlie? What is the nine, the z-axis? Um, yeah. It was the, um, when you talk about linearity, you're Right. Linearity. Linearity creates 3D. Okay. In other words, when the ivy vines are crawling in the jungle, okay, they, and everything's warped and curved, they have to have a substrate. They have to have something linear to wrap around, which is the tree limbs and branches. Okay. We'll come back to that again. Okay. So, I guess. Um, my assistant can help me here. Uh oh. Now, sunshine's a Baha'i, which is a religion. I'm of that same religion. And because I never under talk an audience. That is the most great name of God. That is a symbol. That's God's petroglyph. In other words, while we were all doing our own petroglyph stuff, God was doing His too. Okay. And what was the purpose of our petroglyphs? But to essentially find the, the supreme, the most great being. All coherent intelligence, perfect brain waves, as Spock would say. So, let's keep me from talking, but just start. I take a number, archetypal value. I say 4 times 1 equals 4, 4 times 2 equals 8, 4 times uh, 4 is 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. Everyone get that? It's very important for your math children, Judy. Okay. I then have another column of fours over here, but I don't have these numbers. I have other funny numbers. Like 36 down here, I have a nine. Now, where did that nine come from? I cast it out nines. It also be, can be called cross-addition horizontal math or summing. 
So I said 3 plus 6 equals 9. Okay? 3 plus 2, I found it's easier for you to understand by going backwards and forwards. So instead of starting down like this, I'm going backwards. It's really easy when you do things backwards sometimes. So 3 plus 2 equals 5. Right? So I have a 5 now. 2 plus 8 is 10, 1 plus 0 is 1. 24 is 6, 20 is 2, 16 is 7, 12 is 3, 8 is 8, and 4 is 4. So what I've done is I've archetypal, archetypal value. It's hard to say word. Okay. Over here I'm calling it quantum numerology. Course 45, it still equals 9. That's not by accident. Here we have 40 is 4. 35 is 8. 30 is 3. 25 is 7. And here I'm saying telltale num numbers. Hope Edgar Allan Poe doesn't sue me for this. Taking his title. Um, and I actually take the multiplication table and reduced it from standard multiplication table to a very simple multiplication table. I call it a kid's multiplication table. Okay, um, here I say zero is not a member of any multiplication series. Here I'm saying preferred frame of reference explained through number patterns. A little too deep right now. And I also say time and frequency too deep right now. We were talking about time before we started. And, um, and we used to think of Leon Russell as the master of time, space, and reality. And um, what I have done is I've actually got a hands-on grip of time. Okay? Time to me is... Um, is a phasing, a sequence order, is a, um, is what Charlie is referring to as, how do we say it again, the invisible energy, the, um, the linearity. Our world of time does not have any linearity. We try to think in time as a, as a continuous sequence. Uh, that's a straight line. Time is not straight in our physical world of mass. That's why I have so much trouble functioning as human beings, because in our mind, time is straight. In the higher dimensions which our mind occupies, time is straight. Time follows a logarithmic spiral of infinity, and this is the pathway that time takes. Okay? And this chart is going to explain time. Okay, so let's follow the pathway of time. We have a circle. This is a supposed to be round. Unfortunately, though, um, it was very hard for me to make round. So, it doesn't look round, but it is. It's called the circle of life. It would more correctly look like this. I guess I can probably set it over here. What's the shape of the you guys speak real loud. Is the shape is the shape of the Tibetan endless knot? It's the eternal interconnectedness of all. You know that shape? It's actually more like the shape that one. But that knot theory and knots and how women do their knots and their hairs in certain cultures and all different things, you're right, is exactly this field. It's also called uh, um, um, not, um, forget what it's called. It has to do with um, climb bottles. What's it called? Mobius strip. Mobius strip, but there's yeah. a word for well, it. Well, this gate, too, the, uh, the idea that the symbol for infinity is very much like that, only it's round. you got to speak loud. The Lemna? The, the Lemnus gate is a, um, what we always see as infinity, which is rounded. If you take the corners out of that, that's the right. Lemnus gate. And when I brought back the in, what I brought back in, what my contribution is, I brought in the intersection points. I brought in the matrix to it, so we can have, it's called the underpinning geometry of the universe. It's real important, because if you can have a, 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 a lattice structure, which is what this is showing, interferometry pattern, see how it gets bigger and smaller, the little whole screens, but they make bigger patterns with overlap and stuff, then you can actually scale it from microscopic to macroscopic to infinity. You can, it's called uh, fractals, or self-similar uh, growth, a recursive scrolling. Uh, it's essentially um, 